God even used the ravens to provide Elijah with bread and meat as he sat by the brook east of Jordan. The bread and other food Abraham and Sarah served as they entertained angels unaware, sealed the divine promise to give them a child even as old as they were. All these special meals show people who God is. And today's Gospel reading of Matthew does that and much more. This rendering of Matthew's uh, rendering of the feeding of the 5,000 is the, par the only parable that's repeated in all four of the Gospels. That doesn't make it any truer than any of the other stories, or, but it does maybe say something about the significance of this story. That it was a significant and powerful and crucial story for the early church and the Gospel writers. One reason I believe is that the feeding of the 5,000 made plain who Jesus is in relationship to the God of Israel. It showed Jesus to be the Lord's anointed, the Messiah, greater than all the heroes of faith who came before him. Elijah could feed a widow and her son. Jesus could feed multitudes. Moses said, Gather as much manna as you can eat, but let no one leave any of it until the morning. But Jesus gave the loaves and the fishes for a disciple to distribute, and there were twelve baskets remaining. Manna filled the person's stomach for the day, but Jesus is the bread of life who come down from heaven and said, whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. The disciples, the thousands who were fed, the gospel writers immediately recognized that this meal had special significance. It was no ordinary feeding there on the side of the hill. It was connected with their history, with their divine history, and connected Jesus with that divine history. Meals, they fill our stomach, but they also reveal our identity. The food we, we, we prepare is different as you go to different cultures and perhaps even to different parts of this country. The food we prepare mans us together and strengthens our relationships. You may have a cake and, and candles on it, but it has no meaning unless there are people there to share that birthday and help celebrate it. You know, I think you have to be fairly close with someone before you share an ice cream cone, and probably even closer if you let them lick your cone. <laughs> it isn't a potluck meal until we all bring that favorite dish that we have, and then we share it together. We put it out there. We don't just sit in our own little corner and eat it by ourselves. We share it. Maybe you participated in what's sometimes called a progressive supper, where you eat the hors d'oeuvres one place, and an appetizer another place, and the main meal another place, and then dessert still another place. All not so much about eating as much as about fellowship and enjoying time together with friends. The Bible, too, offers food as a way of healing differences, of showing allegiance to a person, of honoring someone. When Jacob went to meet his brother Esau, he sent food along with livestock as a peace offering to be reconciled to his brother. And after the resurrection of Jesus, remember there Jesus shared breakfast as he broke bread with them on the beach by the Sea of Galilee. This was a meal, I believe, of reconciliation with Simon Peter and with the others who had denied him and deserted him. But what about feeding the 5,000? Here, too, I believe, is a meal of special relationship 
Notice that Matthew, in presenting the gospel, does not record the presence of the scribes and Pharisees. There are no scoffers or people trying to discredit the Messiah at this time, in this scene. The crowd came to hear him teach and to see him heal the sick. And they came with expectation. The 5,000 obeyed as he commanded them to sit down on the grass and wait for him to take action. The disciples, uncertain and doubting at first, nevertheless comply with Jesus' wishes, and they too became participants in this mighty work of God. And there is something else I think that's noteworthy here. And if you look at verse 16, it says that Jesus took the bread. He gave thanks for the bread. He broke it. And he gave it to the disciples. You notice the sequence of actions here. Where else do we find that sequence of actions but in the Last Supper, where he also took bread, he gave thanks, he broke it, and he distributed it. And he said to them, this is my body, given for you. And the twelve who gathered for Passover in that upper room received Christ by faith already. The meal was a sign of a relationship and a seal of the relationship for them. As the disciples took bread and wine from Jesus in the upper room that day, they probably had no idea that that would be their last meal with him before his death. But I'm convinced that they realized and they understood that it had significance for them. It was not just another meal. We all have had that experience, haven't we? Where we've shared a meal with someone who we knew that that person was departing, leaving us. Or maybe it was their last meal that they ate on earth. And that is especially bittersweet for us as we commune and eat together. This morning, this sermon and our communion together, as you've already heard, will be my last act as Ohio Conference Regional Pastor. A position I've held for over 12 years that's been fulfilling for Mary and I in many ways. But God calls, and we responded to that call. First, Mary took a call to become associate pastor at Blooming Glen Mennonite Church in Blooming Glen, Pennsylvania. And she moved in April, and we've been living apart, not separated, but living apart for these four and a half months, and now are eager to rejoin together and to share food and, and fellowship together once again. I'll be pastoring Percocy Mennonite Church nearby, and, uh, and serving in that capacity. I'm privileged this morning to share with you and to bring to close my, my service in this way. And thank you for inviting me and thank you for allowing me to participate in communion with you. I will cherish my time as a pastor. I've learned to know many of you over those 12 years as we've sat together on search committees, um, in pastor relations committee, or in other settings, and I value that. And we say goodbye until we meet again, or until we are reunited at the banquet table here on earth, this earth, this earth or in our church. 